So the big fat lie was really the recommendation initially by the American Heart Association to cut naturally occurring saturated fats out of our diet and replace them with industrially processed vegetable oils, which, you know, as you know, was a recommendation initially that told our entire nation to switch from naturally occurring fats like butter and lard and replace them basically with trans fats instead. The other big fat lie is that fat will make you fat. And that's, I think, almost kind of a semantics issue, but that's what I grew up under is that fat, fat will make you fat. Welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We're your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey guys, I'm Hilda Labrada Gore, and this is episode 173. Our guest today is Jennifer Eisenhart. She is the journalist who has been working on the documentary Big Fat Lie. The lie we've bought is that fat makes us fat or sick. We are honestly still fat phobic despite scientific and anecdotal evidence that points to the truth that fat has many benefits for our health. Jennifer today tells us her own story the health issues that caused her trouble and actually led her to make this documentary. It is going to help many of us realize that we can truly eat fat without guilt or fear, just as this conversation will do. Before we get into it, we want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors. Serenity Farm Bread, long fermentation sourdough bread and cookies baked in our traditional wood-fired brick oven and shipped to your door. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Order today by calling 870-447-2211. For email orders and to learn more about us, go to serenityfarmbread.com and get 10% off when you mention the Wise Traditions podcast on your phone order or in the subject line of the new order email now through April 15th. Vintage Tradition. Green Pasture and Vintage Tradition have teamed up to create the first all-animal oil skin care and muscle and joint care products. They're the closest thing to your skin's own natural oils. Go to VintageTradition.com and check them out. And Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. New Zealand sourced liver, organ meats, and bone marrow in convenient gelatin capsules. I know our own family doesn't get enough organ meats in our diet, so we got some for ourselves. Order yours today at ancestralsupplements.com. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Before we started rolling, you told me about an incident when you were a young kid, about 10 years old, with sugar. Can you tell us that story? Yeah, yeah. I was was always uh, really strongly affected by sugar as a kid. And I think in this particular instance, I'd eaten like a couple of candy bars. And I remember just laying on the couch um, in our home and just getting the shakes. Like my hands were shaky and my my body felt shaky. And I remember complaining to my parents that I didn't feel well, that I just felt really shaky. And at that point, you know, I I think it had happened to me a couple times. And so they decided to take me to the pediatrician and it it was thought that maybe I had diabetes and um, they ran a glucose tolerance test on me, which is a horrible thing to go through (laughs) if you've ever been through one of those before. Mm -hmm. Um, but I tested negative for diabetes, but um, I just was always really strongly affected by sugar. And I knew that growing up and it still as an adult I am. And what kind of diet did you have as a child? What was your household like in terms of food habits? Uh, actually, I, my household had good food habits. You know, my parents cooked at home. Um, we had, you know, probably very traditional um, American diet, traditionally speaking, like, you know, 1960s and earlier, you know, eggs and bacon for breakfast and, um, you know, healthy meals for dinner at home, always, you know, dinner together at home. So yeah, we had good eating habits, but I definitely had a sweet tooth as a child and I would sneak candy bars and I would, you know, I would go for sugar because I liked it. 
um, but it did not like me. <laughs> right. And then did you buy into the low fat craze for a while there? Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up uh, in the era of low fat and I was a teenager really when those, those initial dietary guidelines came out. And yeah, I was, I grew up in that era and had it really drilled into my mind that fat is terrible and that fat will make you fat and that you should avoid it. And I, you know, did all the low fat foods. You know, I remember eating no fat cookies and low fat ice cream, you know, those kinds of things that I thought were the right way to eat based on what, you know, I'd been told. So that I definitely had it drilled into my mind that fat will make you fat and that you shouldn't be eating fat. And so what was the turning point for you? Well, you know, it was actually about a year and a half ago. Uh, I took, I decided to take a, a sugar detox course because of my, you know, prior experiences with sugar and feeling like I need to kind of really get it out of my system. And so I took this course. It's called Restart. Uh, it's the five week course. And one of the early sessions, uh, they talked about how we need to be eating more fat, and including saturated fat. And I, I was like, what? <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't sound right. And uh, so I, you know, went out and started doing my own research. My, my background is in journalism. I worked in, you know, television journalism for many years. And so I started doing my own research to, you know, make sure that this class was right. And I started finding resources like the Weston Price Foundation and Sally Fallon's, you know, presentation on the oiling of America. And so I reached out to Sally and talked to her. And then I started reaching out to more people like Nina Teicholz and Gary Taubes and, and uh, reading their books and educating myself. And then at the same time, I started eating that way. And I eliminated sugar and grains from my diet. I started eating a higher fat diet and lots of vegetables, you know, as well, but, um, but much higher in fat and saturated fats. And I felt the best I'd felt in years. Wow. And, um, and I always had kind of upset tummy, you know, I didn't realize how much my digestion was not really right. I just, it was just so constant that I would kind of have tummy upset that I sort of ignored it. But once I switched during this restart course to um, eating, you know, no sugar, less grains, quality whole food fats, um, that went away. The digestive trouble went away. And so I was getting this confirmation in my own body of that this was right. And at the same time doing, you know, con connecting with these people who'd really done the deep research and realizing that there really wasn't a film out there yet that really dug into this uh, deeply. And so that's what really launched my interest in the topic. Well, I'm so glad you're getting it out because I think as a society as a whole here in the US, a lot of people are still buying into the low fat dietary mentality, thinking that's healthiest because some of these companies are rather entrenched. <laughs> They're also benefiting from that thinking to prevail, right? Yeah, and I think it's, it's just so entrenched, it really is dogma. I mean, it really has become the unquestionable dogma of, of nutrition in our country. And, and I think there are some very large organizations um, that have been telling us for 40 years now that we need to cut saturated fat from our diet. And if they are to change that position, they would lose a lot of credibility. And so, um, you know, Gary Taub speaks to that in the interview we did with him. Um, and I also think that although probably a lot of your podcast listeners um, have learned that healthy fats can be part of a healthy diet, there's a lot of the American public out there that haven't gotten that message yet. Um, and so... Uh, that's why I think a film on this topic is, is important. And I think there are a couple of films in the works right now. And, and I think that's a good thing. I mean, I think the more we can get this message out, the better. Actually, I think our listenership, Jennifer, includes a 
broad variety of folks. And I'm hoping that there's some people out there right now saying, what? <laughs> it's okay yeah. to eat fat. Like I want them to wrap their minds around it. So what I want to go to first is the working title of your film is Big Fat Lie. Who is lying to us and why? So the Big Fat Lie was really the recommendation initially by the American Heart Association to cut naturally occurring saturated fats out of our diet and replace them with industrially processed vegetable oils, which, you know, as you know, was a recommendation initially that told our entire nation to switch from naturally occurring fats like butter and lard and replace them basically with trans fats instead. Because at that time in the 1960s, Crisco and margarine were trans fat. They were hydrogenated oils. Mm -hmm. um, so that, I, you know, that's where the title comes from. That was the additional kind of big fat lie was that industrially processed vegetable oils are more heart healthy than naturally occurring saturated fats. So that's the big, the biggest one of all. <laughs> mm -hmm. The other big fat lie is that fat will make you fat. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, almost kind of a semantics issue. But that's what I grew up under is that fat, fat will make you fat. And so there's actually kind of, you know, a couple myths there that I think we, we will be dispelling with this film. Okay, so the American Heart Association and others have, you know, bought this big fat lie. And so they've encouraged us all to eat low fat. And yet people have actually gotten fatter <laughs> as they've taken this advice, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the big premises of the film. And the thing that we're really looking at is if you look at, you know, obesity and type 2 diabetes statistics um, in the United States, it, it was a fairly level line um, from 1900, uh, kind of a slowly, slowly increasing line, but fairly level up until 1980. And in 1980, when the USDA released the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, that recommended that we cut fat to less than 10% of our diet, saturated fats to, I believe it was under 7%, and that we instead, you know, the base of the food pyramid replaced that with six to 11 servings of grain a day. The obesity and type two diabetes statistics, it just, it just is this huge uptick. And, and that's the beginning of really the obesity epidemic in our country. Yeah, that's, that's a big part of what we want to look at, particularly type 2 diabetes. You know, today, the American Diabetes Association says that one in two Americans today is either pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic. And most of them don't even, many of them don't even know it. One in two. That's what, that's what the American Diabetes Association reports. And isn't it also true that more and more children and young people are being diagnosed as diabetic? Yeah. And the incidence of type 2 diabetes among adolescents before 1980 was zero, statistically zero. And now it's in the hundreds of thousands. So, you know, I don't know that we can entirely blame the guidelines for that, but they definitely coincide with a huge increase a uh, very prominently uh, visible increase in obesity and type 2 diabetes. So we're looking at that in this film, and we're looking at what, not just the, the problem, but what are the solutions. Yeah, that's great. And I think that's what I enjoy about some of the folks who are going to be featured in your film, from Gary Tobbs to Nina Teicholz to Tim Noakes, is that they are pointing to not just anecdotal evidence of people whose lives have been changed for the better as they've incorporated more fat into their diet, but they're pointing to the science that says where we were headed was the wrong direction. Yeah. Nina and Gary in particular, and Dr. Tim Noakes, have done the deep research, and we're really relying on them as our experts to explain that science and tell us where we went wrong. One of the other people that we're interviewing that I'm really excited about is Dr. Sarah Hallberg. And um, she's a type 2 diabetes doctor, and she's using a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet to reverse type 2 diabetes with her patients. And she's conducting a clinical trial, and the early results show excellent reversal rates with those patients. Well, that's really exciting, but it makes me wonder, haven't people tried to treat diabetes and or reverse it, or maybe treat is the right word? 
through diet before? And what were they recommending that wasn't working? Well, there's still recommendations out there that type 2 diabetics eat a low-fat, basically high-carbohydrate diet. And, you know, even still the American Diabetes Association and the CDC has sample menu plans that they give to type 2 diabetics that approach 300 carbohydrates a day. And the, the menu plan I saw actually exceeded the World Health Organization's recommendations for daily allowance of sugar. I mean, Sarah has a, a TED Talk called Reversing Type 2 Diabetes Starts with Ignoring the Guidelines. <laughs> and the, gui the guidelines that she's referring to are the American Diabetes Association guidelines because it, there's still predominant view that diabetes can be treated with a low-fat approach. So, but what she's finding is that a ketogenic diet, is, she feels is much more effective. And we're going to be interviewing some of her patients that have been able to turn their lives around using that approach, reverse their type 2 diabetes, lose a lot of weight, and, and really take their health back. Coming up, we discuss the ketogenic diet trend, its emphasis on fat, and its positive effect on our overall health and brain function. We also talk about how we got off the fat train in the first place, the weak science that took us down the wrong track. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Listeners like you, Cher Huff had this to say on iTunes, gratitude. So very thankful for this podcast and everyone involved in bringing this life-saving information to the public. I am raising my son on a whole food, nutrient-dense way of life. I love knowing the facts behind it all. Amazing host and amazing guests. You have no idea how much this means to us, Cher Huff, and to each of you. You may be one of those people thinking, oh yeah, I'll get around to posting a review one of these days. Let today be that day, please. It really helps get this podcast out there in a powerful, more visible way. And thank you in advance. And Grass-Fed Beef Brain by Ancestral Supplements. Ancestral Supplements offer New Zealand-sourced nose-to-tail organ meats, bone marrow, and brain in simple, convenient gelatin capsules. Traditional pupils and early ancestral healers believe that eating the organs from a healthy animal would strengthen and support the health of the corresponding organ of the individual. For instance, the traditional way of treating a person with a weak heart was to feed the person the heart of a healthy animal. Similarly, Brain was frequently consumed and believed to support brain, memory, and mood health. Included in beef brain are neurotropic factors that support the survival of existing neurons and encourage the growth of new neurons, as well as spinomyelin, which plays a central role in the myelin sheath and cell signaling. So visit ancestralsupplements.com to see what they can do for you. Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. This is Holistic Kelda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. I just, I'm so happy that this ketogenic diet has gotten on the radar of a lot of people. I think when they first developed it, they said it was because they were trying to address people with epilepsy and using it as a dietary treatment to get that under control. But now it's kind of sweeping the populace, I think, because yeah. people realize fat is satiating and they're getting good results from eating this way. It's a high fat diet. Yeah. Yeah. High fat and low inflammation. You know, you're kind of eliminating the foods that, that cause inflammation in the body, which, you know, is rapidly becoming recognized as probably the more dangerous precursor to heart disease than saturated fat are foods that cause inflammation. And so ketogenic diets are becoming, um, more widely used now in the treatment of type 2 diabetes, also even in treatment of Alzheimer's, which some people have been terming type 3 diabetes anymore, that your propensity to get Alzheimer's is much, much higher if you are type 2 diabetic. So yeah, so I think initially starting with treating kids with epilepsy, but then now it's finding its way around and being helpful for a variety of different diseases. Yeah, I'd heard that term before, type 3 diabetes. It's blowing my mind right now. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a really intriguing way to look at it. And it's important to consider how our diet affects our brain, not just our physical body. I mean, it's really all one of a piece, right? But we <laughs> treat it like it's separate. 
Yeah, and there's there's a, some really interesting research going on, and you know, one of the folks that's very interested in this is the guy who's narrating our film, Dr. Mark Hyman. He's a functional medicine doctor, and and he has a whole video series on the effects of a ketogenic style diet on your brain, and and the effects of grain um, and inflammatory foods on your brain, and you know, he's worked with a lot of different patients and and helped them eliminate neurological problems um, through diet. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. I wanted to ask you, um, you said that some of these experts who've done some deep research have some science to support this perspective that fat can be our friend and not our foe. Uh, Do you know, have you learned some of the science in the process of making this movie, Jennifer? Yeah, so the science that I've, I've learned to this point is really about the weak science that was used to um, make the case for the low-fat diet. So one of the early things that I learned in investigating for this film is that there really, there, there really was very little science behind the initial recommendation that we cut fat from our diets and that we you know, instead eat 6 to 11 servings of grain a day. You're probably aware of a guy named Ansel Keys, and he had developed this hypothesis that saturated fat consumption was linked to coronary heart disease based on uh, the six country study, mm-hmm. which was an observational type of science. He took uh, consumption data from six countries and he graphed saturated fat consumption against coronary heart disease in those countries, and it appeared to form a pretty straight line up that the more saturated fat they consumed the greater the amount of heart disease in those countries but the reality was that he had consumption data from 22 countries and if you put all 22 countries on the graph the perfect line disappeared you know for example france ate a lot of saturated fat and had very low incidence of heart disease and so probably one of the 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 cornerstones of this film is going to be about how weak science has been used, observational science has been used to create guidelines for our entire country without really knowing, without the hard clinical trial data, um, the rigorous scientific data um, that we should have when making recommendations for an entire nation to change their diet. That'll be a a big part of the film is looking at what wasn't in place when the dietary guidelines were recommended scientifically. Yeah, I think it's great to get our minds wrapped around the science. And I also think it's great to listen to our bodies. What has your experience been in terms of that? I experienced it myself. I, I would be hesitant to make you know, recommendations to a whole lot of people based on just my own experience. But for me, it confirmed the research that I was doing for myself. So I did experience that when I switched to eating more fat, I didn't have the blood sugar crashes. I, you know, I didn't get crabby or, you know, hangry as some people call it. I've had just a really nice steady energy. Um, I'm more energetic. My thought is clear. I don't have kind of the brain fog that sometimes comes with eating sugar and grains. So personally for myself, I've definitely felt confirmation of what the research that I've been doing has shown. So yeah, Yeah. I think the body is wise. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, wiser than we, when we tend to give it credit for. And on a larger scale, people can also see trends of what's happening. Didn't Nina Teicholz refer to our whole approach to this fat thing as a kind of a football game? Can you explain that a little bit? And then we'll play the clip. Yeah, so we've interviewed Nina Teicholz for the film, and she's just such an amazing resource. Her book, The Big Fat Surprise, is just an amazing piece of work. But she likens the USDA guidelines to kind of a failed coaching strategy, which I thought was a really great analogy. Yeah, so let's play it. This is such an important story. I, I think that it cannot be told enough. Obesity and diabetes rates have been increasing every single year since 1980. That's like an incredible failure of nutrition policy. I mean, there's a kind of conventional explanation that it's really the fault of Americans for not following the guidelines. There's nothing wrong with our guidelines. It's just that Americans fail to follow them. And you know, one of the analogies that I like to use is just like, imagine you had a baseball team that lost every single game 
for the last 50, 60 years. <laughs> And you're like, well, those players, they just don't know how to play. None of my players know how to play. Well, at, you know, at some point you'd have to say, you know, maybe we should take a look at our coaching strategy. You know, <laughs> it can't be the fault of all of those players for decades. But that's basically our explanation for why Americans are getting fatter and sicker. It's their fault. They just can't do it right. What we are living now is just so completely unsustainable. These unsustainable rates of obesity and diabetes were bankrupting our nation. It's destroying people's lives, it's destroying our country, and it has to stop. What we're told by our experts is so completely wrong. So we just need to have more voices kind of bringing the truth to light so that we can really uh, change the course of nutrition and, and health, I think, in America. Oh my gosh, this resonates so much with me, Jennifer, because my husband is an athletic director and he watches his team sometimes. If they keep running this certain screen pass and it's not succeeding, well, for goodness sakes, you've got to change it because you're not getting anywhere on the field. And in this, in this case, in our case, it's not a game, it's our health at stake. Yeah, absolutely. And for people who think that the U.S. dietary guidelines don't matter, you know, like I don't really follow that anyway. There are a lot of people who have to follow that. You know, the USDA guidelines determine feeding programs for the elderly, the school lunch program, military rations, you know, food assistance programs. So the dietary guidelines do have a big impact. And um, I think that's why Nina um, and uh, Dr. Sarah Hallberg have been working really hard to make sure that more rigorous science is used in developing those very important guidelines. Well, as we wrap up, I wanted to ask, how can we get involved in making a difference? You know, I was just thinking about our family's own choices. We also don't follow the USDA guidelines, <laughs> but what can we do to be kind of activists for this kind of eating, for this kind of fat centric and happy <laughs> way of life? Well, you know, I think what you guys are doing at the Weston A. Price Foundation is fantastic. I mean, you guys have been a great resource and a resource to me even in, in uh, researching for this film. Um, if you would like to support our film project, you know, we are really trying to get the message out in documentary form uh, and share with the greater American public, you know, this story and how that fats can be part of a healthy diet and that what we've been told for the last 40 years to replace whole food fats uh, with vegetable oils is not <laughs> really uh, great advice. Right now we're fundraising to raise um, money to finish our film. Uh, we have a campaign on Indiegogo. Oh, Jennifer, that is so great. What a good idea. So we can go to the Indiegogo.com, look for the movie documentary, The Big Fat Lie, and support your efforts as well, because we do want to educate more and more people. That's why we have this podcast. That's why we have all the resources we have at the foundation, because we want people to be experiencing optimal health. And we don't have any ties to any groups that we benefit from because they're selling more butter or ghee or, you know, lard. No, we're just getting this out there because we really care for the public's health. And I want to ask you one question I often ask at the end and feel free to toss in whatever you think in answer to this question. It doesn't have to be fat related is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> if, the listener, if the listener could do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? I would recommend that they cut out sugar. And I'm going to add to that. It's more than one thing, but I would recommend they cut out sugar, cut down on carbs, and eat more whole food fats. Well, that's a wonderful recommendation. And I, I would love to hear from the listeners if they give this a try. You can just, you know, tweet at us at Weston A. Price or, you know, tag us on Instagram. And then, of course, you're, you've got that Facebook page. Is it Big Fat Lie, the movie? Yeah, it's at Big Fat Lie movie. At Big Fat Lie movie. That's right. All right. Wonderful. Well, Jennifer, thank you for your time today. We will get this out as soon as we can so people can be a part of what you're doing. And we're all in this together. Yeah, that would be great. Really appreciate it. Our guest today was Jennifer Eisenhart. For more on Jennifer and her project, visit the Big Fat Lie Movie Facebook page. And I'm Holistic Hilda, the host and producer of the show and a health coach and podcast coach. You can find me at HolisticHilda.com. For the complete show notes for this and all podcast episodes, just go to our website, WestonAPrice.org. And that's it. Let's keep in touch, everybody, and see you next time.
Thanks for listening today. We have all kinds of resources to support you on your health journey. On the Weston A. Price Foundation website, you'll find podcasts, blogs, articles, and brochures related to just about any health topic you can imagine. You can also find a local chapter to help you discover sources of real, organic food in your area. And you can become a member to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism. Visit WestonAPrice.org for all this and more. And remember that the Wise Traditions Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions in Food, Farming, and the Healing Arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.